So we all know that the waterfall model has problems and it's not probably something that can be used very efficiently when working in real world or doing some real software development. To battle the problems with waterfall there are several different solutions and most of them include iteration or some sort of adaptive or uh, evolving software production processes. The, basically the idea of waterfall that each phase uh, follows each other is something that's based on reality. You have to gather requirements because before you, you can design something. You can have to design things before you can build them and you have to build something before you can test it. Uh, this, of course this doesn't always hold true. Uh, but uh, in in a sense that you can build something, but how can you be certain that you have designed something correctly? Or how can you be certain that you have gathered the right requirements or talked with or have talked with the real or proper customers? So uh, the one of the answers to the problems of waterfall is the spiral model. The spiral model combines the elements of waterfall life cycle, but it has the emphasis on risk management. This m means that the, besides being done in waterfall approach, the pro uh, process actually applies sort of iterative loop or cycle of planning, gathering requirements, doing analysis, implementation, testing, and evaluation, meaning that we start with a business plan and initial plan, which is good enough to get us started, and start by collecting requirements for that plan, doing analysis and design for the requirements of that uh, generation or cycle, implementing the first version, testing it, and evaluating if it's good enough. After the iteration has run for some time, at this point, we, besides doing testing, we also have to take into account the possibility that the pro software is already good enough, so we might also go to deployment instead of continuing with the testing and uh, doing evaluation and collecting more requirements. This is considered somewhat a better plan since it allows the software process to start with less than ideal uh, requirements or less than complete plan. It allows us to manage requirements or add, remove or modify existing things and it doesn't mean that the, all the testing work, uh, validation and verification is done at the end. Uh, this is probably the reason why this model is actually used as a basis for several successful process models such as Rational Unified Process and Scrum which, on which both we will be talking more uh, on separate presentation. Okay, so in the iterative development the one project actually consists series of mini projects. During each iteration, this is uh, this a uh, small waterfall here represents the cycle here. In each iteration we do requirements gathering, analysis and design and development and testing and review on how the pro uh, project is working and what should we actually do. The D here means deployment but it actually means that when we are satisfied with this iteration we move forward to the second iteration and then after n iterations we are done with the project. Basically this means that testing can be done uh, constantly during the project and considering the entire project here we can have uh, early testing and we can see that our customers actually like the product. This is important since the costs of fixing or finding a fault in a product is hugely uh, more uh, cheap, uh, cheaper in the requirements analysis and design phase or in, even in implementation than maintenance. So we are, if we find our problems early we can relatively cheaply fix them. If we 
deploy something to customers and then have to do revisions or fix something that has already left our company. It's hugely expensive and it also includes things like public relations hits and all these sort of things. We all know some example of faulty software system leaving uh, the developer and becoming actually a public relations nuisance to the company that ordered the system. So uh, basically the what iterative model has early uh, early analysis and testing on risks. If we take a look into the waterfall model here we see that the testing is done actually here. Like I said on the earlier presentation, the waterfall model would be an ideal case if we could be certain that we can gather all the requirements and we know that the platform won't change and we know that the customer needs won't change at all. So testing in here means basically doing mechanical or technical testing work to get rid of all the bugs, but if we have design problems because of faulty design, or we have to uh, change platform or something else because we did the analysis and design work wrong. That's something that can't be caught here. So the waterfall model, which has testing between implementation or development and deployment, it means that we get rid of the bugs in the existing design, whereas uh, also the design and analysis work should be tested. These are the parts on which the iterative models actually work. Instead of iteration, where we just keep developing more advanced and more ma finalized version of the software, we can also do incremental development. Basically, incremental development is something like uh, iterative development or spiral model, we just talked. It means that we build the art, uh, software in blocks. We start with the base block, uh, which includes all the necessary functions, and then keep adding content or new features or activities or things to our system. Basically, this is something like a web service or web service portal or web store where we first build a system which allows customers to browse these pages and then order stuff from the internet and then order and pay the stuff from the internet. So the first functional version includes only the items that the customer can browse and the second version allows ordering them and the third version allows uh, also paying them and all the other things. Similarly with games, this incremental development would mean that we first build the initial version of the game and then start adding more levels and contents and features as the, pro as the program matures or time goes by. Basically it means that each increment is also its own project or life cycle and it also means that the implementation is done in relatively long-term iterations. If in Scrum we talk about one iteration in week, extreme programming, one iteration per day, and in Rational Unified Process something like one iteration per month, this could mean that one incremental iteration, adding one new component to software, can be something like two to three months. Usually it's a means to uh, extend the life cycle of the product and it's also something that's done until the money runs out or the customer base is too small or, when the, or in serious software business when the final deadline arrives or when the requirements are met. Basically this uh, visual here illustrates the idea. We start with the foundation version add in the first increment new features and on the third increment yet another block of additional features which also uh, address some missing parts from the foundation. So basically incrementation and iteration has only the difference that, the found, uh, that on incremental development the idea is that the first increment is good enough when in the iterative development the ver first version is just something that starts. 
There's also the world of prototyping involved in these development models. Basically, prototyping means that pro the, oh, each of the cycles is something that's deliver deliverable, testable, or at least usable. It means that the pro prototype go starts from the very initial model with the requirements and goes towards actually mature software that's something that fits the customer needs. Of course, it also means that the customer has to have real high participation in the development and that the company is willing to develop several perfectly functional models or almost uh, functional models uh, to satisfy the customer needs. Uh, basically, the prototyping is a form of development and it means it usually means that the customer or customer group or target audience representatives are given a possibility to have hands-on experience with the uh, non-finished version. It also enforces user participation and it's actually a very good way to show the company that something is being done. It also gives the illusion that the software is developed more quickly, but on the other hand it may be expensive, it may be a real hassle to get all the customers or the test users available and it also may create unrealistic expectations because the customers keep always demanding new features, meaning that the, if the company doing development is not very uh, focused on the what they want to develop, the software may end up with featureitis, which means that the uh, software will have re new requirements and new features designed to it to the point where the software breaks and the quality never achieves acceptable levels.